So for perimenopausal estrogen imbalance, the basic of the dietary influences, this is basically what Alan just got through going, go, just finished going through. A high glycemic index food is going to throw your estrogen progesterone balance off, as will xenoestrogens and all the added hormones in conventionally raised food animals. Adequate, inadequate intake of magnesium, zinc, folate, and B6 are also a problem. And if you don't remember anything else I say the rest of the morning, you've got to remember this whole idea of cortisol, cortisol steel, I mean progesterone steel from cortisol. Nobody ever told me this in training. And, um, you know, I wish they had because nobody made a big deal out of the fact that is, as your need for cortisol goes up and your adrenals get tired, they will swipe any progesterone they see. And that includes the progesterone coming from your ovaries, the progesterone coming from your bioidentical hormone prescription, all of it. So you'll hear over the rest of my talk that, yeah, estrogen and progesterone balance is important, but fixing the adrenals is just as important. So first of all, you have to think about what are we trying to accomplish with hormones? Because if you look across the country at all the different people who teach on um, hormone replacement therapy, everybody's, or write about it, everybody's kind of coming from a different place. And you have to sort of figure out what works for you. I mean, are you trying to get levels as high as when you were pregnant? I mean, that's basically what we do with birth control pills. Are you trying to just mimic premenopausal pre levels and fluctuations? Are you trying to get people back to their follicular phase levels with continuous combined hormones so that they still get periods? Are you trying to replace normal balanced menopausal levels? Because if you think about it, I mean, we're designed to drop our estrogen and progesterone when we hit menopause. And, the only, and if you do that smoothly, you don't get symptoms. So all I'm the people who come to me with complaints are the ones who are kind of menopausal, but not really, you know, in terms of their levels. So if all you're trying to do is replace them back to normal balanced levels, um, that's great. And, you know, are you of the belief of the lowest amount for the shortest period of time? And that's definitely where I'm coming from. Most of these are working on the whole adrenal piece and the stress piece, because if you don't get that under control, you're really not going to be able to keep the estrogen and progesterone appropriately balanced. Um, there are other whole systems approaches that work really well. Traditional Chinese medicine, um, the acupuncture, along with uh, traditional Asian herbal formulas. The acupuncturist that works with me um, is really, really good with herbals, not just needles. And she and I sat down one time. She found me um, a list of all her formulae that have Latin names so that I could figure out what plants they were. And um, every single one of the hormone balancing formulas in Chinese medicine address both um, hot flashes and adrenal dysfunction, which I thought was fascinating. And then, of course, Ayurveda and homeopathy can be helpful as well, and I'll be talking more about those in the workshop tomorrow. I'm going to take 10 seconds to say one thing about this way of looking at hormones, because I found it fascinating. Everybody knows about yin and yang, right? And there has to be a balance. Well, if you think about cortisol and DHEA are considered yang hormones in Chinese medicine, and estrogen and progesterone are yin hormones in Chinese medicine. And so yang is all about fire and energy and out there and go, go, go. And yin is all about quiet and nurturing and, you know, cool. So if you've spent 20 or 30, you know, if you've spent your 20s and 30s and 40s going, 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 your yang energy gets really out of balance. And so the yin gets used up to balance out the yang. Menopause is a time of yin deficiency. I mean, you know, your sex hormones are dropping. If you have been giving away your yin energy all of your life and you hit the time when your yin energy is supposed to go down, well, you're already starting at a disadvantage. So you can spend time teaching people how to build up their yin energy so that it can balance out and make menopause smoother. And I'm going to be talking more about that as well. But when I read that, I kind of went, oh, cool. Patients get the whole idea. I mean, they, get, they glaze over when you talk biochemistry. But if you can talk yin and yang with them, they get that. 